I can't do it anymore. Please don't make me play any more double dungeons. I'm not gonna finish it. What's the matter? Too hard for you? No. It's easy. It's too easy. And boring. And long. Oh, so long. Huh. Okay, you can stop playing double dungeons. I already finished the episode anyway. It's already online. You what? I've been sitting here playing double dungeons for two weeks, and I didn't have to be? Oh, good riddance. Oh, if I never see another first-person dungeon game again, it'll be too soon. Here's your next game. What is it? It's first-person dungeon RPG. Welcome to Rask's Virtual Classics. Today we will be playing Sword of Vermilion. We start with a pretty epic title screen, and even more epic music. I mean, listen to it, it's awesome! And you've got the sword and a stone being struck by lightning, by the edge of a cliff, with multi-layered clouds rolling by in the background. This could be the cover art for a metal album. It rocks! Hold on a minute, I was misled by Double Dungeon's opening music too. I'd better lower my expectations from here on out. Alright, after that bit of awesome, we start the game off with text. Pages and pages of text. Phew, I'm glad I dropped my expectations when I did. I could have been sorely disappointed. The story is pretty standard, an evil empire invades a peaceful kingdom, the king, seeing his inevitable defeat, sends his infant son into hiding with the Ring of Wisdom, an ancient family heirloom. This is far too much exposition. It would have been much more impactful if you had found this stuff out while the story progresses. It wouldn't be any less cliched, but it would be better than stating it all up front. With all that text out of the way, we can start playing. Now my first impression. In one word, brown. There's so much brown here. Is it just me, or does the green even look like a shade of brown? Even the music here adds to the muddy feeling. It's very bleak. My second impression is that he moves so slowly. Oh, my father's on his deathbed? Yeah, I'll make my way over there in my own good time. And my third impression, blue hair? Why blue hair? You gotta have blue hair. Okay, so I finally decide to get around to talking to my dying father, and he tells me that he's not my father. Yeah, I already knew that. You are the son of Eric of Alex Scabria. Yeah, I already knew that too. Look, Dad, you're a few minutes late with all this information. I already learned all this stuff in the intro. He tells me he hid my ring of wisdom in a nearby cave. I'd tell him how stupid of an idea that was, but he dies. No time to grieve, however, he just gave me a wad of cash, so I'm off to the equipment store to buy me some gear and get my adventure on. Well, I can't afford the best stuff. I can only afford the cheap sword and shield, which of course means I need to do some grinding to buy some better stuff. And I hate grinding. To be fair, I don't have to grind right now, but I know from experience it's really easy to fall behind in these old school RPGs if you don't keep up with the leveling and equipment. And I have this weird compulsion to leave each town with the best stuff possible. Oh, and I have to equip each piece individually, and there's so much text to scroll through each time you equip one. Ugh, it's just a pet peeve of mine. Alright, it's time to leave town and... I'm in a first-person dungeon view. I'm outside! 
Apparently, the entire world is a big maze. Oh no. I'm having double dungeon flashbacks again. As long as I'm not grinding slimes. No! Okay, okay. It's not nearly as bad as double dungeon. Sword of a Million tried something different with combat. Instead of just mashing on the attack button, here you have free movement around the battle system. I like this idea. It keeps the battles more interesting than your typical turn-based RPGs. Grinding is less of a chore when you're chasing your enemies across the screen with your... blue lightsaber? Actually, I don't know if chase is the right word. Chasing implies some speed. He's not moving any faster than he was in town, and the way he swings his sword looks terrible. and has no reach at all. I have encountered an enemy! I shall casually stroll over and nonchalantly wave my sword at them until they die. Sweet! I found a chest with money inside. That'll help me pay for my better equipment. Wait, where's the money I found? Is it... Yep, it's still in the chest. I have to open the chest, then take what's inside. After all that grinding, I bought the best stuff I can, and I'm ready to enter the first dungeon and find my ring, except that it's completely black. I need to go buy a torch. Back to town! The torch only lights the square you're in and doesn't last very long, so bring a few of them so you don't get lost in the darkness. Oh hi, strange old guy sitting alone in the back of a pitch black cave. What are you doing here? Oh, you have my ring, thanks. Wait, how long have you been waiting here? Either the hero's dad gave the ring to the old guy recently, and the old guy went to the cave to wait for the hero, or the old guy's been sitting in the cave for 18 years waiting for him. Neither of those options make any sense. Why would the father give the ring to the old guy and tell him to wait in the cave, when he could just give the ring to his son directly? Or give the ring to the old guy and meet him in town somewhere? Now that I've got my ring, it's on to the next town where I need to do more grinding to afford the stuff here. Ugh, I'm tired of all this grinding. Aaron's got a save file on here and he's already finished all the early level grinding. I'm gonna save and play his game. What's up with his music? Sounds like some five-year-old just hitting random keys on a synthesizer. Whatever. Aaron, I'm playing your save file in Sword of a Million! Okay? What am I supposed to be doing? Hey Aaron, your dude's getting killed! That's nice! <laughs> your dude just died! I really don't care! I really have no idea what I'm supposed to be doing here. I'm just gonna go back to my own save. Overall, Sword of Vermilion is a very mediocre RPG. The concept was pretty cool, you mix together classic RPG towns, first person exploration, and real time combat. It sounds really promising. The implementation was pretty weak however. The RPG menus are clunky with too much text and pages on top of pages on top of pages. The first person view is okay, and laid out much better than Double Dungeons was. But I find myself watching the map more, and not even paying attention to the first person view. And in battle, the guy's feeble attempts at swinging a sword really detracts from the combat system. Yo, hey, hey! Nah, I think you're being a little too rough on this game, dude. Aaron! Who is this Joker, and what is he doing interrupting my show? Dude, that's the happy video game nerd. Pay some respect. Oh, yeah! I've heard of you. 
All right, what is it you wanted to say? I was just saying, I think you're being a little harsh on this game. I mean, it's like 20 years old, and you gotta remember, most of these old school RPGs didn't age very well. You gotta set your standards accordingly. Expect clunky menu designs, virtually no story, and tons of grinding. But when you realize what you're getting into, these old school games can be really enjoyable. Yeah, that's true. Even with all of its faults, I do still kind of like it. I really can't explain why. I still don't think I could recommend downloading on the virtual console, though. Oh no, there's a ton of way better games to spend your points on. But if you're still interested in playing Sword of Vermilion, I recommend you play it on either emulation or the Genesis collections for the PS2 or PSP because you can save any time, anywhere. Trust me, getting lost on your way to the next cave and then stumbling around the dark trying to find the damn torch only to realize you're in way of your head and you die on the way back to town to heal only to lose a couple hours of gameplay? Yeah, save states are only practical. But for better or for worse, Sword of Vermilion may be a one-of-a-kind game. I mean, it's not really that good. But the whole idea of walking around in first person and then switching to 2D for the fights and a couple other gimmicks make it at least a interesting RPG experiment. But then again, so was Fatal Labyrinth, which I'd argue is still legitimately engaging. So Sword of Vermilion stands as an interesting, albeit very poorly aged RPG. Not all experiments are a success, but most at least make for an interesting study. Would you say it was a virtual classic? Um... It's got a pretty rockin' soundtrack. Nah, this game's really not that good. It's neat, so it's worth playing just so you can go, oh, that's neat. But I, I guarantee you, unless you're hardcore old school, you're not gonna like this game. But it's neat. You know what? You are pretty cool, dude. We should get together and play some, like, Secret of Mana or something. Are you sure, man? Double Labyrinth. Nah, yeah, Secret of Mana's fine. Nice. Let me just save my game here and... Wait, did I just... Aaron, I saved over your save file. You what?! This whole thing with an unbuttoned shirt. Silly me. I redo all those lines now.